Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? I think so. I think so. Let me see if I can react. I think so. Uh, I don't know. Next. Okay, so welcome to a streaming uh, that is um, that uh, in which we will look at uh, some questions that some users asked in uh, the channel questions and resources, and those two questions are uh, kind of. Um, interesting because uh, uh, hello Connie um, because um, first of all they take a bit of time and also they require a bit of uh, like explanation behind the whole process uh, the first question we will uh, look at it's the, a programming question from Connie and basically they want to make like an envelope generator with an Arduino and at first I thought it was kind of simple but then the as as I was uh, trying to code it I stumbled upon some technicalities that made it a little bit more complex and shit like that and wait a minute I need a minute okay now we're ready as I was saying um, the uh, the the programming questions uh, question requires a bit of a thinking behind it and the other question comes from a user that has a long name and I don't remember uh, Velvet Wofer Wafer, I don't know how to pronounce it I pronounce it I pronounce it Wafer because I'm Italian and <laughs> yeah and it's basically a kind of complex question too because uh, it, it requires uh, it, it would require me to have the circuit to analyze and see what's wrong with it. But since we live in opposite sides of Europe, uh, kind of opposite, and so it's kind of difficult to troubleshoot the circuit for me. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm gonna attempt to uh, retrieve a schematic from a stripboard layout and try to figure out what the hell is wrong based on the uh, information that this user uh, told us. So I think as I said I'm gonna start with um, I'm gonna start with the appendix. Thank you. Benjamin, um, I'm gonna start with the Arduino question because I don't know because I feel like it. And yeah, by no means this stream will be short. And if any of you uh, have any question, and just tell me. And if you have like a problem, like you want to you want me to address uh, maybe some parts of your project or whatever you can ping me in the questions and resources channel and yeah but if if you have any question related to what i'm doing right now like uh, right now we will look at the code at uh, an arduino code if you have like a question uh, uh, a question related to that uh, drop the question in the chat and yeah I think we are ready let me see if I remember the shortcuts yep 
I do, but anyways, I need to go a bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> God damn it. I'm back, I'm back. Hello, hello. Uh, analog, please uh, don't say it. Okay, so I think now we are ready to start. And so, again, let me see if I remember the shortcuts. Okay, yes, I remember the shortcuts. Okay, so what we do we have? First of all, what is the problem? Let me take uh, a la la la. Let me see. La ta 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 ta. Let me see. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, no. Okay. Let me let me find the message. Uh, no, maybe it's something. Uh, okay. So uh, Connie says. I was th I was thinking about building an Arduino ADSR for bug trolls, but I suck at coding. Don't worry, we all suck at coding <laughs> when we first approach coding. My basic idea is that I will use an Arduino sketch that will dim an LED from bright to low using PWM. And that's a beautiful intuition. And we will use that uh, to stay true to the uh to the assignment quotes in quotes but there are also a lot of other alternatives like using a DAC digital to analog converter and <laughs> there are lots and lots of uh stuff that uh like um lots of types of DAC and lots of, lots of techniques to use but for now, we will use the PWM functionality of the Arduino. So, I'm sorry, Analog, if I'm, I'm missing your messages, but my setup is sucky sucky. And so I need to control the speed of the sweep using a potentiometer and also make the sweep triggered by a button. Could anyone help me out? Of course, we are here for you so let me see let's open the most uh, beautiful <laughs> thing to use when designing a circuit <laughs> and a software called paint so an adsr uh, envelope looks kind of like this uh, ba -ba -ba, like the attack, let, let me let, let me use another color. Attack, decay, sustain, and release. Okay, so we have uh, the attack portion. We will, um, for simplicity uh, sake, we will um, consider every part of uh, this diagram as uh, straight lines because the equation to equation yes the equation to calculate uh, the various uh, values at any given point of time it's just multiplying a factor uh, by ti uh, by time yeah we won't study geometry right now we I will just assume that everyone knows what I'm talking about. But yeah, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just tell me. I will try to uh, to be. Oh God, what did I do? Uh, to be like to try and explain what I'm doing more in depth because I'm planning on explaining what the fuck I'm doing. 
So okay, so now let me <laughs> Jesus Christ, let me deselect the the thing here. Okay, so uh, let's see. We have uh, like the um, let me see uh, voltage on the y axis of the diagram and time this t is beautiful on the x axis so as time uh, progresses uh, we want uh, the voltage or the pwm duty cycle to change based on a function and this function this function is defined uh, i don't know how to say it in in English, but yeah, it's segmented or however you say it. So uh, let's see here the attack portion. It's basically a straight line that goes from zero to some value that it's like attack value or something A and then after the attack uh, uh, straight line we have the decay straight line that uh, uh, goes down and it starts from the attack value to the sustain value this is the sustain here and it's basically just a straight line uh, doesn't change over time it's, it's a constant and it goes from here, from the attack portion here, to the sustain uh, value, not portion, sustain. Yeah, that's an S. Fuck me. Yeah, that's an S. And then at the end we have this... Um, uh, this uh, portion that is the release, uh, the release um, portion, and it basically goes from sustain to back to zero, to zero uh, duty cycle, to zero percent duty cycle, or zero volts. It depends on what what you're thinking about. If you're thinking as a PWM envelope, we are talking about duty cycle. And if you don't know, duty cycle is basically a ratio between the uh, between the uh, on portion of a square wave and the period of the square wave. We you can think well, you don't have to think about about a square wave like that because a square wave is like that so you have basically the on portion and the off portion of the square wave and you can imagine that here that first of all it's periodic because square waves are periodic and the periodic just means that it repeats uh, indefinitely so let's imagine that this is a portion of uh, the square wave signal and this here, this portion here is the period and let me see if I can do this yeah yeah this is the period that usually uh, it's uh, uh, indicated with a um, capital T and the on portion here is the at least uh, at my school at the place I studied we uh, called it T on with uh, a uh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, what's the the opposite of capital I don't know <laughs> let's say in, in Italian T minuscola that's uh, that's what I what I mean T on yeah let's say yeah of course it sucks so basically we have a T on 
divided by t. Yeah, quality. And so uh, since t on can only be uh, less or equal to t, this ratio goes from 0 to 1 and in percent in percent uh, terms it goes from 0 to 100 percent and yeah this value v that in this case uh, is voltage we can uh, we can th uh, substitute with uh, dc duty cycle in percentage and, and we, we we should be fine so how do we approach uh, this problem uh, and how do we try to code this, uh, this lowercase? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Analog. Yeah, fuck me. And so I was thinking about, first of all, we, we need to think about the time. How do we keep track of time? Well, it's not like um, real time where time is uh, like uh, continuous and and shit like that, and it's measured in seconds. No, in a, a com in a programming uh, con context, and specifically in this context, and how I approach this kind of problem. We will have like a timer that ticks every X amount of seconds and we will just uh, keep, keep track of, <coughs> uh, <coughs> of um, how much time, how, um, wait, we will have like a uh, timer that ticks every X amount of seconds and this, um, Timer increases a oops increases a uh, counter that uh, basically will tell us the uh, time because we know that uh, for example in this uh, in in this case we will have it take like approximately two twenty uh, uh, point two uh, kilohertz so. Uh, 22,000 times per second, and that in terms is uh, uh, 22,000, it's 1 divided by 2, uh, it's basically uh, 45 nano microseconds, I don't know, it's just, it's for the time being, it's trivial information because we're not dealing with um, we're not dealing with um, uh, uh, with uh, precise timings. It's it's an ADSR for music, and as I learned by uh, being in this community, uh, in in music you can just go would do whatever yeah you can program it with to go like one hours and it should be fine yeah it should work but it should be work slowly so you just put whatever number so um <clears throat> let's see after we have this time variable that increases with every tick of this of this timer we can then uh, calculate the expected um, duty cycle value, uh, uh, the expected value um, by knowing what is called as, uh, I don't know what is called it, um, yeah, basically we have like a value that we call M because uh, I call M. I call it M because yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm cool, and we will um, multiply it by X. In this time, X is T, so M T, and this will give you uh, give us the duty cycle value 
But now that I think of it, we might be it's it might be better if we hmm, hmm it might be better if we hmm, hmm. yeah that that that's kind of um, that's kind of um, Hmm, that's that kind of sucks because I, I'm I, uh, I fucked up. The yeah, I fucked up in my mind because I was I was thinking about it in a different way. Uh, that I uh, yeah that we are um hmm, yeah that sucks okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me see. Okay, we will just disregard everything I was thinking that you don't know about <laughs> and try it in another way. So, we have four potentiometers. And let me take the code. We have four potentiometers here. We have the define statements here. Let me... We have attack pot called A pot, decay pot, uh, sustain pot, and uh, release pot. Um, and we will attach those uh, potentiometers to to analog pin zero, one, two, and three. And those potentiometers um, A, D, and R will uh, give us the time at which uh, we need the other event, the next event to uh, trigger. Like uh, the A pot will give us uh, this amount of time. The DK pot will give us this, disregard my bad end writing. And the release pot will give us this time. The sustain pot, on the other hand, will give us just a constant value uh, for this. We'll just give the this value s. And <clears throat> so now that we know how much time do we need uh, the attack to be going the decay to be going and the release to be going we can kinda um, calculate how much uh, do we need to th this low we can calculate the slope of this uh, of this um, straight line so uh, the slope is calculated basically uh, <laughs> you just need to do like uh, the coordinates of this point, the y coordinates of this point minus the y coordinates of this point divided by the x coordinate of this point uh, minus the x coordinate of this other point. And this would give us the slope, but uh, I need to, I wanted to like have a, an increment value that uh, we know this um, uh, we know that uh, we need uh, to um, increment every time the timer ticks we need the uh, output to increment by this amount in order to have an, ex an approximate uh, representation that uh, closely follows this uh, diagram that for the time being it's just an arbitrary diagram but if we had like real values here uh, coming from the potentiometers we wanted to follow closely this uh, the, the line that should be the the output line so hmm uh, how do we do that yeah, I'm a bit rusty. So, let me see. 
and the, the, uh, this uh, reasoning applies to this and this and this. So attack, decay, and release. So it's basically th the same thing. Um, so we have the output value that is equal to uh, is uh, equal to itself plus um, plus the slope actually it's it's the slope here so we know that this a should be a hundred percent pwm so the um, uh, the um, the LED always on so these uh, knowing that this point as coordinates a zero zero so it's basically starting from the origin of this uh, thing we can just uh, calculate the slope of this uh, straight line by dividing a divided by the time we want uh, the thing here to be going on so it's basically a divided by ta maybe mm, yeah why not so oops oh god so where is arduino okay so maybe it's convenient for us here to add some definition about um you know maybe not actually hmm well, um, so here the 100% duty cycle in the Arduino world world is a uh, two, it, it's uh, represented with uh, the value 255 because uh, the function that allows us to write a PWM signal uh, is um, accepts an argument an argument that is a value uh, an 8 bit value that goes from 0 to 255 and yeah we can have 255 different duty cycles uh, yeah basically the a hundred percent duty cycle is 255 so we, we can just say 255 divided by uh, whatever uh, time we read from the potentiometer and what do we read what is the range of the reading uh, the uh, analog read function spits up spits out a 10-bit uh, integer that goes uh, from 0 to 100 uh, 1023 and um, we can just assume that this 1023 here is, for the time being, we can just say that 1023 is the maximum, uh, is the maximum ticks that the uh, timer should do uh, after, uh, before switching to another uh, another to another uh, thing how do you do you say it to another stage let's call it stage and but of course if we read uh, something different we should switch um, here like wait what, what am I doing here yeah disregard this because it's kind of wrong actually I, I was thinking about I was uh, thinking it uh, a little bit wrong maybe this is this is good because we actually want the sustain value to go from 0 to 255 uh, because we want the uh, basically the sustain value is the, 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 the it's directly a duty cycle value and duty cycle is a PWM duty cycle and duty cycle goes from 0 to 255 so yeah I hope it makes sense because I'm panicking right now Porco Dio 
as Simon said. Uh, so let's see if we know that the timer ticks every 45 uh, microseconds let's be a little bit more precise here I can do this yeah every yeah 45 microseconds if I multiply this value by 1023 we have basically uh, an at a maximum attack decay and release of uh, <laughs> 46 milliseconds it might be a little bit too uh, too quick so but we can change the clock afterwards but yeah if we change the clock we don't need to change the the rest of the code it's just a yeah, the, the, the actually the timer code here. Uh, I use a a generator to calculate to make it because it's it's impossible to remember everything. I just use a generator. Uh, okay. So, uh -huh. okay. So yeah, um, if for example we choose the um, the uh, clock frequency to be like uh, let's say ten kilohertz and multiply it by one thousand, it's always mm, no. Let's say five thousand. That might be shitty. That's shitty. That's absolutely shitty. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, maybe two thousand, maybe one thousand. Yeah. So that when when I do one thousand and twenty three, I get one second and twenty three milliseconds. Yeah, that might be a better solution. We have a slightly less resolution on the time, but in the end, we are talking about we are talking about one tick every one millisecond. So I don't know. I think I think we should be fine. Okay. So. Let's code it as if we changed this value because to change this value we might want to change a bunch of things here. So let's see what what do we come up with. So let me declare some variables. Uh, we're doing like divisions so we might want to declare floats floats are um um how do you say it basically decimal numbers with commas and points uh, however it depends on where in the world you live for example in italy we use commas instead of points but in other parts of the world it's the other way around so yeah, uh, flow we want like uh, let's declare like a inc increment for a att a attack the inc uh, increment for decay and release inc increment for release and yeah we might want to initialize those but. I don't know. I don't feel like it. Let's just let's just go with it. <laughs> it's bad practice. <laughs> Let, let's the word know it's bad practice not to initialize your variables. <sighs> but uh, in the end, it doesn't even matter. As <laughs> okay, so how do we calculate those increments? So, 
for the attack is pretty simple. We just say a inc is equal to 255 divided by a. And a is a variable that I declared here before uh, that just takes the the analog value that the we read through the analog pin and yeah it goes from 0 to 123 and now and we should be really thoughtful about this because we are dividing by 0 we, there's an eventuality that we are dividing by 0 and this is really really dangerous so for the time being let's see that we just execute this if a is the is, it's different it's not equal to 0 because if we divide it, if we divide by 0 i don't know actually the arduino how uh, does it react it might react with like freezing or just giving garbage I don't know uh, yeah so yeah let's do it with like decay let's see what to zero and just say d ink is equal to what now we need to be more thoughtful because we oh shit because we are uh, calculating the slope of this uh, line that goes from uh, that goes from uh, this point and this point and basically uh, uh, let me see okay uh, we just need to uh, okay we need to uh, do like a minus s a minus s because it's we, we it's basically the slope the slope uh, slope is equal to delta uh, v divided by delta t and delta t we know it because we read it from the uh, analog pin and delta v is just a the difference between uh, the 255 and the um, and the, the, the thing here the uh, sustain value that we read through the analog pin so we just need to say uh, 255 minus d no s divided by d right let me see okay so, yeah it should be it should be fine i cannot test this code right now because i'm not home but in, it should be fine i don't know okay so now for r again if r is uh, different from zero we need to calculate those and uh, <laughs> Yeah, we might need to be more thoughtful about this whole process but again for the time being let it be like this so release ink is equal to what to what is equal to uh, it's the slope between uh, these two points again we know delta t we don't know delta v but again it's pretty simple to calculate because it's basically uh, s minus zero hmm nope it's not s minus zero wait a minute let me see if we, i fucked up i fucked up i fucked up because we actually 
need to do the inverse here. It's s minus a and 0 minus s for uh, respectively decay and release because uh, those are going down and the slope should be negative. Hmm. So let me let me see. I don't fucking remember. Uh, I don't remember a lot of things actually. So we need to change. We need to change up the thing here. S minus S minus two fifty five, and here we can just say minus S minus S. Uh, minus s divided by r because this is the slope of here it's basically 0 minus s but yeah it's 0 minus s is minus s so let me double check uh, <laughs> yeah maybe maybe <laughs> So yeah, if we do this, uh, a is always positive. It's basically 255 minus zero, uh, s minus a, and zero minus s. Okay, yeah, it should be fine. We should be good to go for the next uh, for the next thing here. I don't know actually. Now, we need to, we need to think about how are we going to trigger this thing. Hmm. Because um, we want like a button to trigger the, the thing. But we want to trigger everything except the release while the button is pushed and when the button is uh, released we want to trigger the release uh, of course and we wait a minute. Okay, so we uh, need to think about how are we going to uh, tell the Arduino to do so and so. Okay, so I'm thinking about maybe having like a... Uh, wait a minute, having like a... The button gets pressed, but we can just read a, the digital pin that the uh, button is attached to, and yeah. We can just calculate accordingly the output value. So yeah, this project is by no means simple because it is not. Okay, uh, wait a minute. I need to open my window because I'm making a making a cigarette. Let me. Let me open the window. Okay. Now y'all need to tell me if the grasshoppers are annoying because it's really loud. And I and I have no way of doing anything about that. Thanks. I'm sorry. That's not my fault. Mm. 
Okay, so now let's try a thing. So let me declare like a boolean boolean value. The boolean value uh, is just like a value that goes from zero to one, one to zero. It's basically a one bit variable. So mm -hmm. uh, let's call it like uh, trigger, trigger, I don't know, and it's equal to digital read, uh, digital read, trig, here I define the trig, uh, pin, the trigger pin here, the but, the, the pin, uh, at which the button connects to, uh, and obviously, I'm sorry if I didn't like address the setup here, but this function pin mode basically takes as arguments like a pin and a mode. Here is input pull up. Uh, a input pull up means that the uh, pin that we declare as input pull up is um, it's first of all it's an input and second has an internal uh, resistor that connects uh, this pin uh, to uh, 5 volts to the supply uh, rail and we this is a way to have a, a a stable input because the the pin is never floating it's always connected connected to something and we have stable readings this way mm. and also because we need like a definite uh, a definite uh, voltage in order to uh, this to work we need to have either 5 volts or 0 volts and we can achieve this with how I'm thinking about connecting the button to the to the thing here. And also, uh, we will need like a um, a debouncing circuit that that's really simple actually. Mm. We take the button. Here's the button button here and this is ground the symbol that I use for ground and we need to basically connect a capacitor that goes from uh, this goes to Arduino let's call the Ar uh, blah, blah 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 this is the Arduino of course <laughs> we need to connect a capacitor from uh, the pin the Arduino pin or that's equivalent to say uh, the this pin of the button to ground because uh, when you press a button there's a physical phenomenon called bouncing and this is caused by vibration inside of the um, the the uh, button contacts and when you press a button the the contacts might start oscillating vibrating because of the force that you apply it to it and this will most certainly um, throw off the readings of the arduino because we are we are reading many 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 times seconds exactly 1000 times a second in this case and these the, this physical phenomenon might might change the the reading from 0 to 1 until it stabilizes uh, and it might trigger a lot of stuff that we don't we want to trigger only once when you when we press so we basically add a capacitor in order to smooth the output and since this bouncing is a high frequency noise uh, with a capacitor we can basically 
um, we can give it a path to ground and the output that the the signal that we read through the Arduino it's a lot smoother and it doesn't have this bouncing that that's that's annoying and yeah so this is the, the basically the diagram that we are going to use to connect to the, the, the thing that the Arduino and here we are reading the uh, trick uh, pin we read the trick pin and uh, basically we want to uh, distinguish from uh, if trigger if trigger is equal is equal to true or high in uh, in in the Arduino Arduino context, true is high, high is true. Those are equivalent. But if we're talking about pins and voltages, it's better to refer uh, to it as high. But since high is uh, basically equivalent to true, uh, we can just say if trigger because the if statement, uh, this part of the code, the code that we are going to put here, like some code here, this will uh, get executed if this is true, if the, uh, the statement that we put here is true. And since uh, high is equivalent to true, if trigger is equal to high, uh, this will be uh, will be executed. Else, we need to execute some other some other code here. So, what kind of code do we want to uh, do? We want to put here. Okay, so. Uh, pa, 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 let me think, because it's kind of it's kind of fucked up. It's kind of fucked up here. So we can have like uh, a, a counter variable called t that's uh, an unsigned long t. Uh, let me explain what unsigned long means. Basically, if we go to the Arduino reference, arduino.cc, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I fucked up, no, resources, uh, reference. So if we go here, we find long. Long is basically uh, long variables are extended size variables for number storage and store 32 bits uh, and it goes from minus 2 billion to 2 billion basically and if we if we uh, put before long unsigned we basically have a variable that can go from 0 to 4 billion and if we increment it uh, every uh, every um, every 1 millisecond we will reach the maximum after let me see let me let me think about it so we have like uh, one millisecond per increment and if I multiply it by four billion I should be able to know in how much time uh, we will reach the we will reach the, 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 the thing, the, the, the maximum accepted value. 
I should be able to say uh, this times two times two and this times no don't tell me I need to do like fuck I need to do like this times 0 0.001 is equal to <laughs> I could have could have like uh, done it like a little bit uh, yeah so uh, <laughs> In four million seconds, four million milliseconds. I don't know. I'm. Uh, it's millise. It's uh, no. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's equivalent. It's four million seconds. So it should be like this. What? Two years or something? I don't know. <laughs> I'm really, I really don't know. <laughs> uh, divided by 60 it's 7 minutes 71,000 minutes divided by second it's 1,000 hours divided by 24 uh, 49 days for 50 days so uh, we should be we should be uh, we should we could not worry about a bunch of things like overflow and yeah shit like that so we just say t plus plus so every time the the thing uh, hmm. but actually we don't need this variable actually i don't think we need this variable actually hmm because i have the increments Mm. No, we need. We need this <coughs> We need the variable. Fuck. So, T plus plus. Okay. So, <coughs> this statement here basically uh, increments the T variable by one. Let me refresh the, the, bed, the thing. Uh, fuck. Made by Pirate Slide. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, yeah, okay. We are, we are good to go. Okay. So, fo -fo, fo -fo. let me see. Uh, we need to trigger here. Uh, okay. T plus plus. Okay, now that we know, uh, we okay. We need to um, we need to uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. We need to know uh oh, fuck fuck fuck. Okay, we need to know uh when we start. And when we finish every event here, because we know the deltas here, but we don't know actually um, when in time we are when we start this. So we need to uh, we need to be a little bit thoughtful about this. We can have like a, a series of variables that basically uh when you trigger the when you press the button uh it stores a a basically a, the t variable somewhere yeah, that's not a very cool solution uh, in order of memory usage but in the end we have for this i think we have plenty of memory in the Arduino so we might be cool with that i don't know so um ba, 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 ba. let me think so we have uh this like attack start attack end 
and it coincides with uh, decay start and we have decay end and and that's it actually for the uh, the while is pressed uh, portion of the code and when we release okay so we might be and we don't need this actually we don't need this um, storage variable to store when the decay is uh, is when the decay is um, uh, when the, the decay ends because we can just check when the uh, output variable is less or equal to zero so this is kind of smart I don't know so we can just define like unsigned long a start a finish finish uh, decay finish and release start we can uh, we can do this actually okay so um, actually I don't think we need an attack start actually because attack start is unsigned unsigned uh, I don't think we need an attack start, but I don't know. Let me see if we will use it. So a start is equal to t. A finish is equal to a plus a t. And dk finish finish is equal to a plus d plus t hmm? because we're basically uh, we're basically uh, calculating all those in reference of when it is it triggered hmm but we are doing uh, hmm. hmm no 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 this is this is uh, we need to do this. Um, we need to do this once. When so, let me see. Let me um. Uh, let me. Uh, let me declare like a boolean here because. We need um, when, if I if I leave this code like this every time this code gets triggered and the button is pressed we will just we will just update those variables uh, again and again and we will not actually ever finish the attack decay and anything like that. So we need to set something here. Uh, we need to send something here. Okay. So um, let me uh, declare like a boolean variable here. Bool. Uh, uh, variables variable set equals to false um, and we can just say if exclamation mark variable set and we can do this and then I should be able to do this and basically if this variable is false we can just um, we can we we can um, uh, run this code, and if we say variable set is equal to true, once uh, the code gets again to this, when it gets triggered uh, another time, uh, 
uh, the code, uh, the uh, the Arduino will see this and will uh, uh, will see this and say, okay, uh, the variables else um, have already been set, so I don't need to run this code again. So no worries, actually. So now the when we release the button, we want to reset the variable, the variable set variable. Okay, yeah. the, 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 the word play is, is horrible, but yeah, I don't mind it. So variable set is equal to false because when I first uh, push the button, the variable set is already false. So uh, this code will get triggered and we will have uh, we will have um, uh, we will have like sh sh shit going here and okay so uh -huh. hmm yeah, and when I release it, the variable set gets set uh, back to false, so that I I know that the, the the process should start all over again. So if I again uh, uh, later in time I push the button, I can uh, the, the, the the this code here gets triggered again because this condition is true. Uh, variable set is false, yes. Okay, so I need to run this code. So now I need to, um, I need to, um, do, do, do. Mm -hmm. okay, so now that I have those variables, I need to check if we uh, reached the uh, the attack finish. So here I press the button. Here I press the button, and after a while we reach this moment in time. The um, the a finish finish time. So. Uh, when uh, we need to ch constantly check if a finish uh, is uh, isn't reached or something like that. So, hmm. so let me see. Uh, if t is less or equal to a finish. We need to, um, um, here I declared a variable here called byte uh, output. It's byte because it, it's, a, it's an 8-bit variable. So it goes from 0 to 250, 255. But, but, yeah, I actually mm, hmm yeah maybe I need to declare it as a float yeah I need to declare it as a float actually because if I try to do like a sum between a, a float and a byte and I then take the result of this sum and put it inside of a variable of type byte, it would do an implicit conversion. And uh, basically, if I try to add like something like 0, 0.0 something, it will result as a zero, as if I added zero. So, yeah, it, it, it shouldn't work. I don't think it will work. 
but also I can see a lot of problem with this code actually. Hmm. But yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I suck. <laughs> I suck. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so out is plus equal to um. <laughs> It, well, now that I think of the problem that I saw while I said that I suck, it's basically if you press the trigger button while you're changing the um, the, the the potentiometers, you will you most likely in, um, find like a problem maybe. I don't know, but we should test it, but again, I don't have an Arduino right now, so no testing. So, then. so out is equal to, plus equal to a ink. And we should constrain this variable to 0 and 255, because we might go over. Hmm. Yeah, for the time being, let's just ignore that. Because also, uh, yeah, that's negative. Let, that, let's just go with, let's just roll with it. So, if t is less or equal to a finish, let's do this. Else, if uh, now I need to know if T is between A finish and D finish. So I can say if A finish is less or equal to T or this is the symbol for logical or and I will explain after if T is less or equal to uh, D finish. I should take the alt variable and plus equal and minus equal or plus equal. Let me see. D ink here is uh, S minus minus 255 and S goes from 0 to 255. So it's always negative. So yeah. I should be I should be adding those variables because if I add a negative value to a number it's like subtraction that's the whole thing with oper mathematical operations so the increment I yeah and if Mm hmm and um, if I should say if T is greater than the finish then ought should be equal to s s is sustain so let's let me let me explain here so um, if T is uh, smaller than the time we expect the uh, attack uh, curve to finish we should add the increment that we calculated here the slope of the of the the the, the, the thing the 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 the, 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 la, 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 the um, the slope of the the attack curve to the output, to the output variable, I called it output. Why did I say? Let, let me let me do like this. Output out is plus equal to uh, the increment of the attack. If the t, if the variable t is between a finish and d finish, we are in this region here. In this region here the region delimited by those two gray lines here um, 
so we um mm -hmm. we can um pa -pa 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 -pa. what 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 I was I don't know what I was saying. Okay, yeah, if we're between those two times, we should be able to we should uh, subtract the d ink or add the negative d ink. Uh, the uh, decay increment, the slope of the um, the decay curve. That's negative here because we we are calculating it as if it was negative because it's negative. And then if uh, if t is else if I should say else if t is greater than the finish if we are in the sustain region of our AD, ADCR, uh, b -b 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 ADSR uh, envelope generator we should just take the output and keep it at the sustain value that we uh, decided to use uh, so yeah it should be we should be fine with this, I think. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So now. Now we release the button finally. We uh, say that the variables. We we should reset the variable once we uh, repress the button later. So this statement here says just that, and uh, we can now say that if output is greater than zero. Uh, is greater than zero. Uh, if, out, if output is greater than zero, then we can just say take the output plus equal uh, the release increment R, R inc. We can just say that. Uh, yes, rigid out but <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> and yeah, if output is um, greater than zero, we should decrease that uh, the output value. Uh, by our ink. So now we can just say. Did I? Did I? Am I missing? Oh no, I'm not missing anything. Here's the old the curly brackets. So now I need to check if constraint because we need to make sure that. Uh, the output variable is between its boundaries, between the 0 and 255, because, uh, because, yes, because we, ne we then need to convert it back to a, uh, a byte. So let me, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, so F3, constrain, constrain, uh, here's constrain. Constrain is a number to be within a range. Okay, 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 okay. Well, what's the returns? X if is X. <coughs> okay, so. Um, uh, allow with data types, all data types, okay, perfect. So I can use floats and yes. So I can just say, 
out is equal to constraint uh, out that goes from 0 to 255 and then I need to say um, like I need to declare byte tmp out is equal to um, ba -ba 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 -ba. is equal to two 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 uh, round. Uh, yeah, I can just say round out because I need to take the uh, floating uh, point uh, value uh, because even if we if we constrain uh, the out, uh, the value from 0 and 255 which are uh, I, I think I need to add comma uh, point zero because I don't know I, I might I might need to do all this actually okay so no 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 no, no. yes I should be yeah, I think I need to do that. So, even if we constrain it between like integer values, like let's say this, those are integer values, baby, basically, we need to convert it to uh, to its like integer representation. Let, let me check if round um, round should be returning a uh, int but I can say byte but I can assign it to a byte it should be it should be allowed um, because because it basically if you try to assign like a, uh, a an int to a variable a variable of type byte it should be able to convert it implicitly, convert the, the, the thing complicit, implicitly, implicitly. So, okay, F3, I pressed F2, I can uh, round, let me see, no, there's no round in the reference. Uh, math constraint map min pal script yeah I think it should output like a int I think we are good to go to say now finally out LED we can just say the fucking finally analog analog right out uh, out LED uh, pa, 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 TMP out temporary out and we should be good to go I think because I'm not sure of what I did in any of this so now Let's talk about. Oh, first of all, we, I, um, as before, I need to declare the function of the this out LED. That's pin nine. Out LED should be an output. We need to say, and I chose pin nine because pin nine is one of the PWM uh, pins on the Arduino. So now I can say like R start. I can delete it because I never use it. It's it's basically just wasting memory. So, uh -huh -huh, okay, okay, okay. So, um, yeah. In, <laughs> okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Okay. Let me think about what's the next step. Okay. So now let me address some problems that are not. Uh, visible on in the code because it should be fine this code should be fine but there okay void loop no okay yeah may maybe 
kind let me delete this this is uh, previous code shit we don't need this okay 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 uh -huh. uh, okay so uh the pwm frequency of the arduino is like uh for uh, wait first of all uh, there are two uh, sets of pin that output a PWM signal uh, from the Arduino on the Arduino. Uh, there are uh, 11, 10 and 9 and then the other three I don't remember. But basically uh, well actually there are three sets of two yeah, maybe I should say that. But basically, on the Arduino, there are three timers. And all these three timers use uh, are used um, usually for PWM. As of now, we are basically using one timer, the timer zero, uh, for uh, the clock for our clock to trigger this function here yeah and um, uh, and the other two um, currently are cur um, are uh, uh, controlling the PWM signal and the the three timers that we have uh, two of which are 8-bit um, timers and one is 16-bit uh, one is a 16-bit timer and basically what it changes for us it's only basically that uh, the PWM in the 8-bit timers is uh, slower than the 16-bit uh, timer I think it should be it should be uh, it should be that so yes I think <laughs> and so the, the output uh, pin 9 should be controlled by the 16 bit one uh, the 16 bit timer and this allows us to reach faster speed and but that's not enough because as of now the timer frequency is something like approximately approximately one kilohertz and this will result in an audio rate modulation in the output signal and basically we don't want that in this specific application we might we, you might find find it like cool and stuff like that but for for our purpose as i'm uh, thinking about it it's not what we're looking for so we need to f uh, f uh, change the pwm frequency and how do we do that? We uh, take Google and <laughs> PWM frequency Arduino Arduino how to change. We ch we search secrets of Arduino. Uh -huh, okay. So no bit no is no 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 no. We want uh huh. Okay. Fast PWM mode. The following code fragment setup. Fast PWM on pins three and eleven. Timer two. Uh huh. No. Uh, okay. No. Mm. No. Let me. Timer top. No. Hmm. I don't remember actually how I did it, but it should be something like this, but I don't remember actually. So, 
Eta i Let me. Let me. I'll go change the frequency of. No, I don't want to. No, I don't want. I'll to change frequency of on PWM pins. Because I don't remember anything. No, don't please. Okay. Here's the default frequency uh, for D5 and D6. Okay, I was wrong. I should be using D5 and D6 actually. So uh, I shouldn't be using D9. Okay, let me let me close the, the window because actually yeah. The, the mosquitoes were swarming inside of the fucking. Okay, so go the bit blah 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 blah. No no no. Uh huh. Okay. These are D three and D eleven. I want D five and D six because it is timer two. As long as it fits not timer zero. Okay. Never mind. The five and the six, we do, we, we can't use that because we are the five and the six are controlled by timer zero, so we are using timer zero. But again, we need to change the timer code here. So let me, uh, uh, yeah, I want, uh, um, I want this. Okay, so the standard is, is one kilohertz, so. I can just copy, take this, Control C, and Control V, I guess. Let me Control V, Control T to indent the the thing, and timer zero is done and dusted. Now, oh fuck! Now we take um. Uh, we take this and D3 and D11, so which PR, PW, this line of code here changes the frequency of the PWM uh, for D3 and D11 to 31 kilohertz. So I think it should be plenty. Uh, in order not to have like uh, audio rate modulation shit like that uh, and we can just edit this register inside of the timer code that I just pasted here I can just say this control T and this changes PWM frequency for pin 3 and 11 to about 31 kilohertz so and now out LED should be 3 or 11 it's it's equivalent and I think we're done actually I this is untested code so Bendix, no, I just finished the first uh, question, uh, the Connie's question, but they left like one hour ago, basically. So, yeah, they missed all the explanation, but again, this is a streaming that, and we will, they will be able to, to rewatch it. So, uh, change the speed of frequency for pin 3 and 11 to about 31 kilohertz. Control S, save, salvataggio completato. And we are done. Maybe. I don't know. Because I, this is, as again, this is in tested, untested code. I don't take responsibility for any damage done to anything. <laughs> Yeah, the, the yeah, the control S. Okay, so now, 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 let's go to 
our uh, of course if any of you have any question about this whole thing uh, let me know uh, yeah let, let me let me check if the, the, the stream quality the stream quality is kind of shit actually i don't know oh it's th 360p maybe if i put it to 720p yeah I'm, I'm checking chat on my phone because yeah i don't want to go uh yeah, it's actually pretty good actually I'm proud of myself uh -oh. okay so now we can address uh, Bendix problem. Uh, yeah, why should I be mad, Bendix? <laughs> yeah, if even if you missed this stream, the stream would be up on YouTube. So no worries, no worries. And also, it's not like I'm losing money or something, or maybe I mean someone is murdering my family. Yeah, yeah it's chill. It's chill. It is a chill. So uh, again, so if nobody of you have any question about this, I will just go to our next problem hello hello problem so we have this thing here this uh, schematic here and there's a problem with the uh, circuit and I don't remember actually so Bendix says I have an issue the square wave output of this works neatly but the tree is, is kind of fixed. Only thing I have changed uh, is probably grounding the R2 resistor in the upper right corner as the person, as, as the person that made that uh, schematic obviously connected it to nothing. And I put a capacitor between pin 6 and 7 so that on uh, a 3 position switch up is to 20 nanofarad, middle is 47 nanofarad, and down is 10 nanofarad. Also, my square wave looks like this. What I've done wrong. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me look at this. So, first of all, <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to make a joke about the dust, but it's not worth it because it's stupid. So, um, this looks like something that is, um, that, uh, is about, like, uh, capacitance or something. I don't remember, actually, but this is basically what happens when you, uh, differentiate a square wave. This is, this might be, uh... But this might be uh, big words for a lot of people, but I can not. I can't do. I can remember actually because I I did it like three years ago. This at school, and since then I have been like slacking and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not doing. A, I'm not a really good student actually. So let's see. Also, v min v um, um, minimum is minus sixty one volts. Oh my gosh! What the hell? Six minus sixty one volts. Wow! You you have some serious peaks here. And the root mean square is fifty one volts. Wow. The frequency is, oh, also, your frequency is less than one hertz, but yeah, I guess it's, it's a LFO, so it's, it makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, maybe, maybe it's some problem with the output capacitance, actually, because now that I think of it, uh, with this low capacity, with this low frequency, uh, it might, be like something related to capacitance output 
But also, at first glance, I don't see any output capacitor here. And also, uh, I don't see, yeah, as this user here uh, says, I've just been there and I'm not entirely sure how to wire the hardware. Pro tip for, for anyone that wants to share a design with someone else. Please, for the love of God, put every single information. Because this, this is kind of bullshit. Rate 3, rate 3, what does it mean? I don't know. When, when you're trying to explain something to someone you have to assume that the other person does not know anything. And also, you have to know and re uh, remember that the person you're talking to it's not, uh, cannot read your mind. So, for example, m maybe rate 3, rate 3, those two, if I, if I didn't know anything about this circuit, I would assume that I would just need to connect Ray 3 and Ray 3 together with a wire. And I bet I, sh I, I would be wrong, because that, that's the first thing that I think when I see um, two, two points in the circuit that are named the same. So at least put some some diagram like a potentiometer that says, okay, ray three here, ray three here. <coughs> so I have a reference and I can say, okay, so um, yeah, maybe um, maybe the um, uh, the uh, guy the the person that designed this that. Uh, I put it on a stripboard design, uh, assumed that uh, uh, we knew everything. I, I lost my train of thought, actually. So, yeah. Le let's try to create a schematic from this layout. So, first of all, I will open my uh, ECAD of choice. I use Eagle because I work with it. I have a student license, I think. Please, Autodesk, don't sue me. I didn't do anything. I don't work. I am unemployed. Uh, so, I don't do anything. It's just, it's just for educational purposes. I don't do anything. Yeah, and also, yeah, it says my name. But I guess it's fine. So, first of all... Oh my god, what the fuck is this? Okay, so, and then, never mind. We need to uh, file new schematic. Okay. So, the first step in uh, reverse engineering a schematic from a... From a layout is to understand, uh, to uh, have... A, the uh, components that uh, have a, a list of components uh, to add to our schematic. So first of all, we have a dual op-amp DTL072. It's a pretty common thing to use. And I think Eagle has it in the library. So we have um, uh, six resistors, two capacitors, one IC, uh, one, uh, one op amp. It's actually dual, so technically two op amps. Uh, one diode, one potentiometer, and one switch. So I don't know. Switch and potentiometer will be just, uh, I will just use like uh, uh, generic symbols. In the end, we don't need to create a board as of now. So we will just need symbols to understand. Uh, yes, there is a diode uh, bendix, 
it's an LED. Here's here's the diode. Here's this is the diode. An LED is light emitting diode. So technically, it's a diode. So let me see. Okay, no, except the LED. There's no other diode. <coughs> <coughs> okay, so uh huh. Let's go to ego. Let's do add part, and I should be able to say TL072. Uh, TL072. No, of course, I should say 072 with an asterisk. No, TL. Let's say op amp. Operational, operational. Let me see. Yeah, Eagle has some shitty names for for stuff. Yeah, don't tell me. Fuck. No. Fuck. No. I hate this. I don't have. Uh, I don't have the. Uh, uh, the seven, uh, but I should be able to. Um, I should be able to substitute it for a um, for any other op-amp actually. But I wanted to I, uh, maybe the any five five three four. It should be equivalent to. The TL072. Okay, so um, let's say TL072 data sheet. Data sheet. And we can say uh, any 555 5534 data sheet. Is it 5532 or 34? Oh, God. Five five three four. I wait a minute. No, I need the I need a fucking dual operational amplifier. God damn it! Here's the dual one. Uh, yeah, I guess we will go with it. But in the end, we are uh, reverse engineering only one. Because it's a dual LFO, uh, so I, I I can go with any. In the end, this is not a. This is only a uh, reverse engineering of the schematic, not the entire board. So we need just we need the schematic only to understand what we are working with, what kind of circuits we're working with, and. So yeah, basically, if we take a look at the um, at this, we see R1, 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 R5, R5, R4, R4, D1, D1, R6, R6, R3, R3. All the components are basically uh, doubled, and I think that the person that designed this just designed one side, copy and pasted. And then uh, modified it a bit to fit the final uh, design here. So now, uh, we need to add six resistors. We need to add six resistors. Resistors. So resistor. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, our US 20710, yeah, yeah in the end. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then we can, we can kind of, um, we need to take the data sheet of the TL072. Uh, and we can take a look at the pinout. Let me see. Okay. 
offset and one in in minus let me see oh what the fuck um uh, uh no this is tl 071 not 72 so i need to scroll down here it is okay so here's the uh thing so pin one is out this is the output pin of the first uh, uh operational amplifier and this is connected to through a diode to this pin so it's basically out r5 ta 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 and here so in minus so uh -huh. okay and uh, um hmm this the in minus is also connected to this hmm let me what the fuck Huh. Okay, okay, okay. I think that. Huh. Yeah. Let me let me start um, arranging the components on the on on the the, the, the the schematic. Let me take an LED. An LED now. An LED now. One one LED. I need one LED. One simple LED. One simple LED. Here's one simple LED. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Ta -ta, ta -ta -ta. Okay. So now, as I was saying, uh, pa -pa. okay. So R5 is connected to D1 with the uh, to the anode of D1, and the cathode is connected to in minus in minus. So. In minus, I should say, inverting input. So this is the schematic here. The first uh, connection that we can do it's connecting the R5 to the LED, and the R5 to the out. Oh, no, I was <laughs> fucking it up. And basically, yeah, this is what we have so far. R5 connected to the LED, that's connected to the output, and uh, the thing here. Yeah, you understand. You understand. So now we need to do 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 do. We need to um, in minus in plus is gonna rate one. Okay. So in plus is connected to. Uh, the non-inverting input of the amplifier of the first amplifier of 2 is connected to R4 in plus in non-inverting input R4 where it is is it here R4 ta -ta -da -ta -da, is the R4 and R4 is connected to rate 1. And we don't know what rate 1 is. But I assume... I don't know. I assume some, something. But I think that this person copied and pasted everything, even the names. So, okay, I understood, okay. Rate 1, 2, and 3 are the legs of the potentiometers, and rate 1, rate one, 2, and 3 here are, are, not, are uh, is another potentiometer. But, the, <laughs> yes, yeah, the, 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 this layout sucks really hard, actually. So, I'm sorry for anyone that followed it. So, yeah, um, uh, 
Take the same problem, fix the triangle, fix the reinforcement, just the winner a little at least. R1 is 10k. What do you mean by uh, fixed uh, triangle wave? Uh, do you mean that the tri triangle wave was fixed or that you... F Hello? I'm counting out? Really? Fuck. Okay, I think that I'm not cutting out again. I don't know. Tree was fixed. Do you mean that you fixed it or that it was uh, it wasn't changing? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Understood. Okay. So, uh, okay. So I now know that rate one, rate two, and rate three. Okay. So now, okay. Now, rate one, rate two, and rate three are potentiometers. So let me take let me take a potentiometer. Let me take uh, okay. Let me take a potentiometer. Uh, potentiometer. Potentiometer. Let me take a potentiometer. Any potentiometer is through pool and actually, I want this though. And I can have rate one, two, and three be this shit. I could only see on the oscilloscope that it was three, about ten hertz. Okay. Uh, I I still don't know what would be the problem actually, but I think that you might need to check the uh, uh, the whole wiring again, maybe just just for uh to be sure okay so let me let me finish the um, the, the, the 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 thing that the, the schematic so what i was okay r4 is connected to in plus and it's connected to rate one okay uh-huh okay r4 rate one so R4 rate 1. Rate 2 is connected to. I saw rate 2. Rate 2 is connected to R1 and is connected to the output here. Queen D. <laughs> so R1 is, pa -pa 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 -pa, is uh, connected to the output. Yeah, maybe, maybe, and I see, maybe I should do it like this. If we are going to what I think we are going to, uh, should be like this, I think. I hope I didn't fuck up. Okay, uh, so rate two, R1, rate three. Is connected to the other side of the, the the whole thing here, and also okay, this is the BCC. Um, yeah, minus 15 volts. This is minus 15 volts. Plus 15 volts is this, and we just need to ignore that for the time being because it's 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 not. Uh, uh, it's not uh, essential to connect that to know what circuit we're talking about. Ah, okay. Uh, R6 is connected to R4 and is connected to this pin here that is 2 out. It's uh, 2 out. Okay. Uh, eagle schematic. Eagle schematic. Eagle. Eagle schematic. Uh, invoke. I need to invoke. No. Invoke. Uh, oh, pump next. Okay, okay. This is the other oh, pump. Um, hmm. R6 is connected to the output and goes to R4. R6 output R4. Okay, R6 output R4. R6 output R4. But what side of R4? 
uh huh uh the, the side that connects it to the in plus in uh, the invert the non-inverting input so let me let me let me let me let me check okay 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 let me let me let me let me let me do okay maybe i need to oh my god I don't know why it, sometimes it flips the, the, the stuff I'm working with and I hate it. I don't know why it flips it. Uh, I, I just assume that I didn't deselect the, the uh, flip horizontally button, maybe. So R6 uh, connected to this. As of now, I don't recognize uh, this design at all, but I also need to finish the, the thing. So R6 is connected to the output, and this is connected to triangle selector 2. Oh, for the time being, let's just... Okay, selector switch, selector okay. Okay, selector here is a switch. Uh, the uh, here is connected to the middle leg of the switch, and this is the left switch, and this is the right switch, the right leg of the switch. Okay, so yeah, you. Uh, so okay. So, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. okay, uh, hey, yes, I finished it, but I need to finish this before, then I will be able to send it to you, and also, I think it might be worth to go through the stream, and uh, the, the, the part where I talk about your project, so that you might get some insights and maybe uh, understand better uh, what I did but yeah uh, yes. it's you know, I didn't do a great job at explaining I think I don't know but yeah okay so now uh, R6 the output is uh, okay I need to include a, a switch uh, switch 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 I need to include a switch uh, switch uh, switch let me see a switch. Da, 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 da. Oh, CMOS switch. I don't need analog switch. No, 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 no. I need no a relay. I don't need a relay. I don't need a relay. A dip switch. I don't need a relay. Toggle switch. Here we go. Toggle switch. Okay. It's a bit ugly. But I guess it should work for us. And this goes from this. Let me let me see. Okay, okay. Three selector. Da, da, da. Uh, two. One goes to here and goes to this pin here. That's uh, the inverting input. So, okay, let me take two capacitors. Okay, as capacitor, 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 the US. Yeah, that's good enough. Yep. And I should be able to do that. I should be able to do this. Uh, and mm, yeah, maybe this drawing is not the best actually, but yeah, it should be fine. And now I think it there should be three connected to this actually. I don't know. Okay, let me see. Rate 3 is connected to ground and also to R3. So, rate 3 is connected to R2 that goes to ground. Strange. 
R2, 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 dove sei, dove sei, dove sei, dove sei, dove sei, dove sei, eccoli qui, R3 goes to ground through this, let me add a ground marker actually, might be worth, ok, let me add some ground, GND, GND, no I don't like it, I like it. Ok, GND, connect it to G, oh god, ok, <clears throat> and then these are three should be connected to, let me see, no 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 no, where the fuck is it, uh, to, uh, oh, oh, um, uh, hmm, Wait a minute. R3 is connected to those two capacitors. Okay, okay, as we say in Italy. Okay. And this is connected basically here. After I'm done with every connection here, I will uh, uh, I will refactor it. And uh, but, uh, but, uh, are you Spanish? Just asking. No, no, I am Italian actually. So this goes to ground, and in plus goes to ground, and also this goes to ground. Hmm. In plus goes to ground. Hmm. I never saw anything like that actually. So I don't know. I don't think I um I will be able to help you much actually because I'm not familiar with this design. I'm not familiar with a lot of designs actually. B but nevertheless, I wanted to help, but I don't think, uh, I never saw anything like that. Okay, now maybe it's time to, uh, <clears throat> it's time to, uh, to change it a little bit in order to, have it a little bit more like um, like a little bit more um, I don't know maybe a little bit more tidy or something yeah da, 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 I don't I don't I don't I don't know yeah that 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 sucks that sucks okay let me let me let me let me delete this and we will just oh my god we will just move this and this and this and this and uh, I think we should be Fine, where is the junction? Here's the junction, okay. I don't care about the name. Let me just, yes. Connect this to ground, okay. Let me see, okay, it's connected. Okay, let, mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm starting to not understand, no. No. Hmm. Because this is double supply, and I, I, maybe I should learn the spice simulation, and we could, uh, we could like simulate the circuit uh, with spice, and spice is. Uh, Something, yeah. I should I should definitely learn a circuit simulation. I never worked with it. 
very I I I done like two or three simulations in my life. I will I always like did uh, shit with actual circuits like breadboards and shit like that. Never simulated anything. Okay, I think I think we are done for the circuit. So, uh, to be honest, to be completely honest, I don't know if I can help you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I kind of recognize the positive feedback loop here. I kind of recognize it here. But it's missing something here, a capacitor in order to... Because um, when I look at it, I see something like recession circuit op-amp, op-amp, I see uh, something like this. You see the feedback positive, uh, the, uh, okay, uh, okay, so. This is the, the thing here, the blah, 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 the positive feedback loop. Let me, uh, this is the positive feedback loop. What we kind of see here, let me take it here. And it's actually kind of the same. And we also see something else. I don't know. Some circuits are really strange and exotic and uh, and spooky. Ooh. But yeah, I I don't have a clue how this works actually. So I don't know. Let me let me try something. Let me. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, the first thing that I would tell you to do is to double check every single piece of connection again, even if you did. Sometimes the sometimes you miss something, and you just need to check to double check another time, and also. Uh, uh, this is the uh, here. Uh, this is uh, this should be the square output, and this should be the the uh, the uh, output, the triangle output. Hmm. Wait a minute. Let me let me try something. Let me try something real quick. So Roland system seven hundred dual LFO. Roland system 700 dual LFO schematic. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they oversimplified it with something. Yeah, definitely. Wow. This is pretty cool. Wow, this is IRS. Yeah, this is this is a stripboard layout. This is a fucking stripboard layout. This is pretty cool. So yeah, frequency pot pin three, pin two, pin one. This is how you do it. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this is um, uh, the unit had to run in the circuits. It's magic. Yeah, I think I think there's some problems with. Yeah, I I don't really I don't really know. Man, yeah, that that sucks. That really, really sucks. Actually, 
but yeah, you you need to double check and triple check every single piece of connection here. Um, and yeah, the square output is taken from here. So the square hub output is uh, ba -ba -da -ba 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 -da. let me see. Okay, one out. So this is this is true. Yeah, this, this is what I meant. Let me let me add some labels. Uh, X reference on and uh, X reference on. Uh, let me uh, let me let me add some names. Uh, square out and tree out. So yeah, that's that's the the whole schematic. Okay, uh, this is not a simple. Leo, this may be too oversimplified. True. I did both. I did both are doing exactly the same. If both are doing exactly the same, there are two options. Two options. One, the schematic, the the layout that you found is wrong. Two, you did something wrong two times. Those are the only two options. There might be a third option. That you might be using something, some components, some faulty components, and actually there's a fourth option that uh, some components might be like m might have like overheating, and yeah, I don't know. How much experience have you with the soldering? Because. Uh, when I first started, I struggled a lot with uh, putting together my uh, own circuits because I was like overheating components and and doing messy soldering jobs. So if if you, I don't I don't know if you're a beginner or or if you're an expert actually and okay you're pretty good at soldering so. Did, uh, first of all, did you socket the the ICs? Oh, you, you did. You do it for work. Okay, so if you do it for work, <laughs> the shitty soldering job, uh, the shitty soldering job is to be excluded, but not completely because you might have fucked up something but i don't know i if if you could if you could, could actually send me over discord uh some uh, uh some uh pictures of the uh board like the soldered board some close ups uh yeah the thing is that uh, by socketing the ICs, you avoid uh, you avoid uh, the uh, possibility of the ICs overeating while soldering them, and you increase the chances of it working because ICs uh, need to follow a certain a uh, heating curve while them while you solder you solder them also, uh, yeah and yeah the, 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 if if they are uh, um, if you overheat them for too long they might be dead, they get damaged and the circuit doesn't work anymore. So next time I would recommend with with uh, every single uh, something something uh, that you socket them. Use sockets there 
relatively inexpensive I didn't check them and they are plenty useful they save your ass multiple times so yeah the thing with dead electronics is that it's uh, it depends on how you break them it might be non-functional at all it might work partially uh, I don't know so I don't have a way of testing them and so I don't know uh, Okay, um, I'm waiting for the pics. Also, um, you said that uh, the the square wave works fine, but the uh, TS100. What say TS100? I never heard of that. It's an oscilloscope, right? Maybe no. What say TS100? Oh, oh! It's a soldering iron. Fuck! Yeah, I never heard of that actually. So I'm sorry. And um, okay, okay. You know what? How did you connect the potentiometers? Uh, if I could, if you could send me the the pictures of the. Uh, of the, 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 the uh, wait, I'm um, uh, if if you're if the um, if what you're saying is maybe uh, uh, there's an error in the uh, selector and uh, potentiometer connection maybe I don't know if you if you send uh, some uh, reference pictures. I could tell you uh, if I can if I if I can tell if there's an error uh, I would try and correct you uh, as, as long as if there's an error actually uh, yeah if yeah maybe maybe this um, it might be better to, um, to to do it off stream, maybe because mm, it might be a little bit uh, easier. So I don't know. So um, first of all, I will like screenshot this and send it over you so that you have it. And yeah, it should be. Wait a minute. What's the grounding thing that you fixed I don't remember uh, la, 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 la. okay so it's the R3 oh no it's the R2 here R2 okay R2 is connected to ground okay yeah it's fine 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 and okay so yeah I will uh, I will send you the, the screenshot because I, I cannot be <laughs> okay let me yeah control B yes here's the schematic and it should be fine it should be correct uh, in the end it's not a very difficult uh, circuit to reverse engineering uh, on the top one uh, R2 on the top one, it's not. Look at it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the 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 stream chat is a little bit delayed. And yeah, so if anyone has any question about, I don't know, maybe their project. So well, first of all, thank you, Bendix, for sending the. The, 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 the thing I'm sorry we couldn't like figure it that out on stream it would it would have been like really cool but yeah sometimes it sucks sometimes it sucks for real and if anyone that 
that's uh, on the top of the artist listed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I saw, I saw. Uh, if any of the remaining four people listening, or maybe or more, I don't know. Uh, I didn't refresh the the stream. All right, that are listening have any questions about any project that uh, I don't know that they are doing or something, or they have any question related to electronics or how do I do something or whatever. I'm here. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and yeah, I will wait for a bit. And if nobody else answers, I will just end the stream and uh, give you a good night. Good night. And I will go and play Minecraft. Yeah. Tomorrow I have to help my dad putting back some insulation on top of a roof. And I don't know. Let me let me uh, write on Hangout. I don't know. Let me try. I'm oh, more crescent off stream. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Any questions when I uh, when I have like some some time to address all your questions, I will give you an answer. Mm. If anyone has any questions about electronics or something like that come into the stream I'm trying to answer questions I don't know but I don't think anyone will answer mm. let's uh, uh Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm. To be honest, I'm. I'm not very familiar with audio-related circuits. I'm just familiar with electronics in general. And yeah, and uh, at school they they tell you like uh, this is a operational amplifier, this is a transistor, this is a resistor, this is a capacitor. Those are some common configuration you can find all of those stuff. This is how an operational amplifier works. And after you know some some of the basics, you can uh, deduce from your uh, for um, for yourself how uh, stuff works. And yeah, even if you're not familiar with some circuits. You can just uh, draw it and analyze it a bit, and you have. I'm just familiar with building quad coppers. Oh, quad coppers are really cool. I I wish I had like a drone or something, but yeah, they're they're kind of expensive. So I don't think anyone will answer. Uh, anyone will uh, will answer uh, the question. Uh, so mm -hmm -hmm. so I think I will just. Yeah, but I, I, as of now, my priority is not building uh, quadcopters. But if I have like some, if I have some spare money, I would. I I wanted to. I want to try it. Uh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Thank you everyone for watching. I think that uh, everyone left. So <laughs> thank you very much for attending and <laughs> thank you Bendix, but I, I think that's not necessary to send and you don't need to send me anything. Uh, 
uh, anyway, thank you for <laughs> thinking about that. But anyways, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, good night. Bye bye. I'll see you uh, in the next help desk.